Hello friends, I am Ariel Miller and I am the author of this training, How to Conduct Research. What is research? The author Zora Neale Hurston wrote that research is formalized curiosity, poking and prying with a purpose. In the series of modules I have created, I will provide you with the roadmap, tools, tips, and tricks that can help you formalize your own curiosity and share with the wider community what your poking and prying uncovers. Click the Start Course button on your screen to get started. This course is designed to be interactive. To get the most out of this course, be sure to pay attention to icons that reveal additional information and content. Unless otherwise noted, to progress through the course, the learner must actively navigate to the next slide. Audio will typically be played with each slide and the learner is encouraged to let the audio play through to the end before continuing to the next slide. At any point, the learner can navigate back to a previous slide. Course navigation can also be done through the menu on the left-hand side of the screen. The default setting is to show the menu, however, it can be hidden by selecting the hamburger icon next to the course title. Viewable within the menu is a glossary of terms and additional notes pertaining to a specific slide. Additional resources can be found in the upper right hand corner of the course player. You can adjust your view settings using the gear icon in the lower right hand corner. To adjust your sound or mute audio, click the speaker button and to turn on closed captions, click on the closed caption icon. In this course, you will learn the key steps of the research process and how to apply them to conduct research. The objectives of this course are to help the learner to, one, develop an identity as a researcher. Anyone can be a researcher if they have a desire to explore, the curiosity to drive them, and the discipline to do the work and apply the scientific method. Two, understand the research process sufficiently and learn how to apply the fundamental concepts of research. Three, execute research independently. Research is primarily conducted independently, even when working as part of a collaborative group. Four, recognize what are and are not ethical research practices. And five, explain their research to multiple audiences, including their supervisor, peers, colleagues, research team members, conference attendees, or to the general public. Research collaboration is when two or more researchers work together to tackle a research question. Collaboration is an important part of conducting research and allows researchers to develop complex and robust research. Collaboration can be conducted on any part of the research process from developing research goals and designing experimental methodologies to providing resources, data, or equipment. Whether the collaboration is planned from the beginning of the research project or ad hoc, these seven tips can help you ensure that everyone is on the same page. A research collaboration should be mutually beneficial to all parties. Setting expectations in the beginning of any research collaboration is essential to avoid confusion and ensure both the amount of work and level of recognition is established up front. This includes publication authorship and first author designation, the use, publication, and ownership of data, access to equipment and laboratories, and analytical support. Based on established expectations, tasks can be divided up between collaborators. This can include providing access to laboratory equipment, conducting supporting research, or developing algorithms for data analysis. Publication is a necessary part of research. It allows researchers to share ideas and results and help other researchers expand the body of knowledge in various topics. The publisher Taylor and Francis states that, quote, 
Authorship gives credit and implies accountability for published work, so there are academic, social, and financial implications. It is very important to make sure people who have contributed to a paper are given credit as authors." Close quote. The difference between authorship and acknowledgement is based on the level of effort and contribution. In a collaborative group, authorship may also involve you being the co-author and the collaborator writing a first author paper. Click the links in the supporting resources section of this slide to review the co-author guidance and an explanation of a credit author statement. The credit author statement is an excellent way to define the level of contribution for all authors listed in a publication. Depending on the level of contribution, regular meetings may be required, and as the principal investigator or a doctoral student, you should set up those meetings. It is highly recommended that you also write up a summary of what was discussed during these meetings and share them with your fellow collaborators in the form of meeting minutes. It will help to ensure that expectations remain set. As you conduct your own research, you will eventually start to generate your own data. This data may need to be based on or compared to data from a collaborator. Based on how expectations were set, it should be well documented how the collaborator data can and will be used. This includes intellectual property and proprietary information issues. Researchers are not exempt from complying with research ethics when collaborating with other researchers. When issues with data are found, it should be brought to the attention of the entire group, regardless of who generated the data. All researchers should proactively disclose any financial or other conflicts of interest or potential conflicts of interest on the project. If you are starting your research journey in a graduate academic program, choosing your advisor will be one of the most important decisions you will make. You will spend more time interacting with your advisor than any other individual during your time at graduate school. It is important to choose wisely. Most students focus only on the credentials of the advisor and how closely the potential advisor's research aligns with their research interests. I submit to you that of equal, if not greater importance, is the type of person they are. Graduate research is not typically conducted in a cohort. The milestones that you must successfully traverse are subjective, and your advisor needs to be as much your advocate as your mentor and teacher. There is also an inherent power imbalance between advisor and graduate student in most universities you should consider how a potential advisor may manage and lead you given such a relationship. Click the options on the right-hand side of the slide to review four different types of potential advisors you may come across and consider their pros and cons. Remember, you are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you.